the new screening room of the cinema at TCAN, the Center for the Arts in Natick, Massachusetts. And it's a beautiful room. I'm sitting in this really nice, comfortable chair, just waiting for something to appear on the screen. I'm yes. David LaValle. I'm talking to you today about our new performance space, which we've just added to our second floor of our facility. Before we head upstairs, we're in a firehouse building that was built back in 1875, a fabulous space that we bought and renovated back in 2003. We never really did anything with the second floor since we ran out of money. So this is really the renovation that makes that space suitable for programs for the very first time since we bought the building. So would you like to come upstairs? I'd love to. I'm going to check out this entryway. Looks like there's an elevator here, so it's accessible. Yeah, this elevator was built as part of the very first phase of the renovation of the building. It's actually located in the hose drying tower of the firehouse. Oh my goodness, wow, that's cool. Okay, so we're leaving the entryway. Wow, so this is the new performance space. Oh nice, there's lights. Wow, look at that ceiling, the beautiful flooring. We installed a new floor, which has a nice rustic wooden look that, that really helps to highlight the natural brick walls and the natural wood trusses that are overhead. So we're really maintaining that historic and rustic New England feeling in the approach to the style of this room. What are you envisioning as performance in here? A decision on how to use the space was something that we didn't take lightly. We worked with a number of volunteers, program directors, members of our board, and two different architects in order to explore what might be possible up in this space. Very early in our planning, we decided that we wanted something that was flexible enough so we could use it for different purposes. We didn't want a dedicated space such as a dance studio or a visual arts museum because we really wanted the ability to use it for lots of different reasons. One of the things we'll be using this space for is as a function room because it's such a beautiful space with a high ceiling that we know people will enjoy having parties and functions in this room. You're expecting people might lease out the room? Yes. So the second use for the room really takes advantage of the wonderful acoustics in the room. So if you, if you listen to a sound in this room, it's a very lively room with a lot of good reflective bounces. And so we thought that because of the aesthetics of the room, as well as the acoustics, that it would be a better setting for our classical music series. So starting in December, we're going to be relocating our classical music concerts for the Young Masters series that really feature rising stars in classical music in this room. And it's slightly smaller seating capacity, but I think that the flattering acoustics combined with the wonderful aesthetics are going to make for a really great classical music, chamber music experience up here. We are envisioning that we would probably be able to seat 120 to 140 patrons in this space as opposed to 270 on the first floor. So those two applications for the room uh, seem to have great appeal. But the thing that really got a, a lot of support for the project was this notion that we would create a small intimate movie theater located here on the second floor as well. Wow. Um, and there are so many people who enjoy film and film takes so many different genres that a lot of people thought it would be a terrific thing. We're thinking that this would be best suited as an art house cinema, we wanted to make sure that it would be a top quality experience. So we really didn't spare any expense to make the best movie experience possible in this size room. We purchased a state-of-the-art movie projector and all of our equipment supports digital cinema. So that's really what we invested in. So we have a digital cinema server that allows us to take movies from distribution, ingest them into the server, and then present them to our audience on the big screen. The sound system is also very impressive. If you look around the perimeter, you can see a number of surround sound speakers on the left and on the right. And then in the rear are more speakers for a separate channel of the soundtrack for the film that give you audio information from the rear. Oh, wow. And so you can have things that. creep up from you from behind. Exactly. <laughs> so for the front speakers behind the screen, mm -hmm. there are 
very large speakers oh, okay. that allow you to hear the main body of the sound content and make it appear as if the voices you're hearing are actually coming from the actors on the screen. Then on the floor behind the screen, we have about a six foot wide subwoofer with two large 24 inch speakers that is enough to shake the building. Oh dear. So we are able to deliver a very immersive movie experience wow. with, the, with the equipment that we've invested in. We worked with a partner, Boston Light and Sound, mm -hmm. based in Boston, that really does a lot of the high-end movie theater installations. Yes. So we worked with some terrific people in order to create an experience in our room that people would want to come back to again and again. And so when you have the performances here, there's a PA system for those performances. We envision that the acoustic performances that are classical and usually are things like a string quartet or a solo piano wouldn't require sound reinforcement. Of oh, absolutely. Um, right. Our plan now is not really to do performances that require sound amplification. amplification. That might change over time mm -hmm. because one of the things perhaps we might consider is moving our open mic up to this mm -hmm. wonderful space as well. But to begin with, we'll be pretty much presenting acoustic performances only up here. It's a beautiful space. Thank you. Up against the wall, you can see 120 folding chairs that will become the seating for the theater. And these are the best chairs that we could find. The chairs have cup holders. The seats fold back with a spring-loaded mechanism. They're extremely comfortable, but we can fold them up and store them for when we have functions in the room. If you were to be screening a film, all of these seats would be set up in the room. Yes, we invested in 120 seats, mm -hmm. which we think will be about the maximum capacity, mm -hmm. but we've been very conservative as far as the sight lines. We wanted every seat to be a good one. Mm -hmm. So on the sides, even though we might have physical room for more seats, we're beginning with seats positioned at an angle to the corners of the screen that provide a, a good sight line. Uh, sight line. We're probably going to stagger the seats so that you're not looking into the head of the person in front of you. But because we only have six rows, even the seat in the rear row still gets a very good look at the screen or at the performer. Everything is programmable, and so we can store lighting scenes in programs that can then be triggered by a playlist. And then when the projectionist hits a button, the lights will come down, the curtain will open, the trailers begin and they all happen on an automated sequence. It's really impressive how far this technology has come. I also want to point out this enclosure that was built above the entryway, which houses the digital projector that we use. That's an air conditioned chamber that will maintain a constant cooling temperature for this projector and its amazingly hot bulb. And right next to the projector, you can see a device that's used for sending closed caption signals to devices for the hard of hearing. So what's the width of the screen that we're looking at? Uh, it's a 20 foot wide screen, but the width of the screen can change based on the aspect ratio of the film that you're showing. We're thinking about our programming around five different families of film. And so those would include classic films. A number of people would like to see traditional art house cinema type fare, which includes documentaries and independent films. The third area is music-related films, and those might include musicals as well as live concert films or music documentaries. The fourth area would be family films, because we know there's a lot of members of the community that really want a chance to bring their kids to see something on a Saturday morning. And then finally, recent releases. We think that there'll be an opportunity to show strong films from a year or two ago that maybe people missed the first time around and would love to see on a larger screen instead of just seeing them on Netflix. Are you thinking the programming would be individual dates for specific films or would it be showing the same film over for a few nights in a row? Good question. We are currently thinking for things like family films, we think that there's a time slot in the week on Saturday mornings that makes most sense for that kind of a screening. Mm -hmm. But we think that there are small collections of three or four or five films that we could present as part of a mini festival for over a two-week period. Mm -hmm. So we would be rotating films that were somehow connected. Maybe classic cinema that relates to science fiction or great films of the sea. 
baseball related films like A League of Their Own or The Natural. There's so many great films that are of a kind. Mm -hmm. So we're thinking about that approach mm -hmm. as well as during some weeks showing just a single film for the course of a week or so. So did you ever think about having opera here? You know, um, those simulcast operas? We love that idea and several people have made that suggestion. The streaming opera broadcasts are done in specially selected theaters who have a special dedicated streaming device to receive those broadcasts. Oh yeah. But we have researched this and it's something that we believe that we could do. Oh, that's And I, I know that there's a great amount of interest in that as well as some other streaming type events such as Broadway performances. And I think that this is the perfect kind of intimate venue to enjoy content like that. Yes, especially since there's this nice lobby and people could feel more social. Yeah, part of our renovation when we took on this project was to relocate our concession stand into the lobby area, which allows us to centralize it. And so it will be used for movie screenings up here, as well as for performances on the first floor. So we have beer and wine available, and so we'll continue to make that available for those screenings, as well as classical performances up here. This is a cherished thing for the community, as well as all the donors who contributed so much to make sure that this could happen. That's great, David. Thank you.